Let's look at the importance of recitals, not the kind of recitals made in front of an audience, but according to the guidance when drafting a family court order. And understanding the purpose of the recital can be confusing. Hi, I'm Karen Cole from Legal Minded Friends. Knowledge is power, so let's get started. Recitals set out the background and key issues so that the next judge can quickly understand the intention of the order at a later date. In a memorandum on drafting orders in late 2021, Sir Andrew McFarlane, President of the Family Division, refers to his previous guidance, which I will read in a moment. His memo, among other points, recognizes that many judges and practitioners are not using the electronic templates or programs and are instead preparing lengthy narrative orders. The cost of preparing and agreeing lengthy drafts add to the delays. Sir Andrew McFarlane is referring to the use of templates being used to draft orders so they capture essential information. He remains persuaded that the first order made in any case, public or private, should comply with the previous practice guidance, PD 12B paragraphs 14.13, so that the key information in each case is recorded for subsequent orders other than final orders, the court, while following the previous guidance, should tailor the order to the particular circumstances of the case, without the need to include lengthy narrative material, which does not relate to the requirements of the particular order. The minimum required content in an order following a second or subsequent interim hearing will be 1 a recital of who attended and their representation, 2. a recital of issues determined at the hearing, 3. a record of any agreement or concession made during the hearing, 4. a recital of issues that remain outstanding, and 5. the text of any orders that will be made. He continues, it is expected that this approach will enable the court to limit the content of orders to what is strictly required for effective case management. Following a final hearing, the court order should, as has always been the case, set out in full the orders that the court has made together with any appropriate recitals. It is the intention that the use of shorter forms will be drawn with ease electronically. The Law Society have access to such templates, which I have left a link to below. On the screen, we can see the template he is referring to. My view is the recitals are not enforceable in any obvious way. And as a part of the process, the court requests parties to agree the drafting of the orders. In addition, Sir Andrew McFarlane states in his memo, the orders should be agreed drafted and lodged with the court before parties leave the court building or, if remotely, on the day of the hearing. I'm not sure about the cases you've attended to, but this has not been the norm in the procedures that I have attended. And I agree with Sir Andrew McFarlane. The frustration with delays in agreeing the draft order are time-consuming. Before ending and giving you a quick summary, let me introduce you to Get Legally Speaking, where you will find great legal podcasts completely free. In a conversation I had with them, they remind us that recitals in many family law orders are crucial for reaching an agreed way forward on a range of matters. So check out Get Legally Speaking. I have left links below. So let me give you my quick summary recap. Using templates for drafting orders will indeed reduce unnecessary confusion, delay, and costs. Let me just add another point. I have had clients interpret recitals as being enforceable, when in fact they are part of the order, but if they are not drafted in a particular way, they may not be enforceable. So understanding the purpose of a recital is important. If you have a legal worry, contact us. At Legal Minded Friends, we offer information and services so you can obtain justice without the high cost of solicitor fees. Please like this video, share this video, as you never know who it will help. Thank you.